Hi everyone and thank you for joining again. In this video I will show you how you can make this beautiful back here. This is the back. This is the front. As usual everything you need will be linked in the video description. The main part of the back is single crochet only. As you can see here. So I won't show this too detailed, but only make a small sample here. You start with your slip knot and then you will make 35 plus one chain stitches. So we need 35 and make an additional one for the turn. So this is how chain stitches should look like and you make 35 plus 1, so in total 36. Then you start in the second chain from the hook, this one here, and make single crochet all the way back. So in sum you will have 35 single crochet. So this is how your row will look like. At the end of the each row you make one chain, turn around and then go back again with single crochet. And the, again at the end of the row, after you made 35 single crochet, you chain one, turn around and go on with single crochet again. So, as I said, you start with 30, 36 uh, chain stitches starting in the second chain from the hook, then make rows of 35 single crochet. And in total we will need 53 rows. If you'd like to have a bigger bag you can of course adjust it here and just add some further rows. Then I already made the chain stitch here. We will now prepare for the puff stitch pattern. And we always make two single crochet. then chain one, skip one, and make two single crochet again. Then again chain one, skip one, 
skip one and two single crochet again. Chain one, skip one and again two single crochet. And you go on like this for the rest of the row and then you end on two single crochet. To turn around we now chain three One, two, and three. Turn around. Then we make a single crochet around the first chain stitch. Like this. And then we use this little hole here so the first hole of the last row yarn over pull through yarn over pull through and one last time, yarn over and pull through. Now, yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook, except the last one. this, yarn over, close, then single crochet in the next chain and you always pull up the single crochet quite far as you can see here and now we make the second puff stitch always in the chain in the last chain which is located below the last puff, puff stitch and again we yarn over and pull through three times. You can of course make the puff stitches um, thicker then you just yarn over four times or five times whatever but you will need much more yarn for that. Then you yarn over again, pull through all the loops on your hook and close. And you always have to make sure that you pull up the thread far enough because otherwise you won't be able to reach the next chain stitch to make the single crochet there. And as you can see here, I'm on my third puff stitch. Yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook and close. And this is how your puff, puff stitches should look like. 
as you can see here should have made them a little bigger because it was difficult to reach always the next chain stitch so I remade the first puff stitches again so let's have a look at the last one again single crochet here Then we chain three, turn around, single crochet in the first space between the puff stitches, and then you have this hole here on the side where you make the next puff stitch and again you yarn over and pull through three times then yarn over again pull through all, this, uh, all the loops on your hook except the last one and close. Then single crochet in the next space between the puff stitches and then puff stitch, puff stitch like this through the space below the, the current puff stitch. Like this. Pull up far enough yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook, except the last one, yarn over and close. And again, single crochet in the next space between the puff stitches. As you can see, the, the single crochet is always very stretched. And the next puff stitch and close. And this is how you make the puff stitch rows, but as you can see here, I made a mistake. So be aware to not poke through the puff stitches of the last row. I will have to do that again here. So this shouldn't happen. This is correct. This is how it should look like. Now let's have a, a look at the end of the row again. This is our chain three space where we make our single crochet in. Then again, puff stitch, a three yarn over. yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook, except the last one, yarn over and close and another single crochet in the chain three area. If you don't reach the chain three area a second time, you can also use um, the last little side loop on in the row 
then you chain three again, turn around, single crochet in the first puff stitch space, and then you have this little space here again where you pull through the next puff stitch. So in total I made 13 puff stitch rows. rows and you have to make sure that it um, lays flat and doesn't uh, uh, crunch together <laughs> and in the end you just cut the thread and pull it through. Now, especially the, the, the edge here of the top doesn't look very well, so we will make um, two rows of single crochet around the part that we just made. So we start again in this corner loop here at the bottom of our crochet piece. Just poke in there, pull through, chain one, poke in in the next loop, single crochet. And now you always use this top loop here and the loop in between the top loops. So poke in below the top loop, this one here, with a close up, single crochet there. poke in in the middle of the top loops. So this is the loop that you need. Try to get it on camera a little better. This loop here and single crochet there. And then again the little top loop and so on. So this is how it should look like now. And the top area, let me see how I can, I can get it on camera. The top area looks a little different on the sides here. So we will use this little loop here. This one. Then this one, yes. Then this one here. Then we have these loops here. 
poke below all of them. Then we poke below this loop because if we would only poke through below the upper loop, I think the hole here would be too big, the hole below the single crochet. So we poke through below this lower loop. So let's start. So as I said, poke through this loop single crochet, poke through this little loop here, single crochet, then we have these loops here, poke through below all of them. And we will make three single crochet here. Maybe you won't get won't be able to grab the last thread here again. So you poke in below these three single crochet. This is how it should look like. Then below the next one and so on. You don't need to get a certain stitch count here, but our only mission is that on the um, back remains flat, that it doesn't uh, curl up together. So if, um, it's better for you to change the stitch count here from, I don't know, three to two or increase it to four. Do whatever you like. So you don't need to have a certain stitch count here. Our only mission is that it doesn't curl up. Now let's have a look at the edges. So here I will definitely make two stitches in the corner stitch to get a nice round and also in the second row of single crochet I recommend to make two stitches in the corner stitch here because in my opinion the edge will be nicer in this way and also on this side here We make single crochet and you can just see what's best for you. Either one or two single crochet per loop. As I said, there doesn't have to be a certain stitch count. Our only mission is that it doesn't curl up. So go on like this. So on the other side you again have the shown loops poke under, then you go all this way again where you use the top loops here until you reach the end. Here you make one chain and go back all the way. And as I said in the corner, corner stitches I would recommend to make two stitches. So let's have a look at the sides. I started with 20 chain stitches here and again we start in the second chain from the hook and go back all the way with single crochet.
At the end of the row, this is how our side should look like. Now we chain one, turn around, and again make single crochet all the way back. and stop in this loop here. Now, this is how it should look like. And you can see this little loop here in the tip. This one here. And we will now make two single crochet in this loop. This is how it should look like. Single crochet one. And you poke in in the very same loop and make a second single crochet. Then you just go on on the other side of our crochet piece and go on with single crochet. And in this way you get this nice round edge here as you can see. Now you go on with single crochet until the end of the row, chain one, turn around and go back again with single crochet. This is how it looked like. And now, these are the two single crochet that we just made in the top loop. And we will now double both of them. So we make two single crochet in the first one. These were two and two single crochet in the second one. And then you just go on with single crochet. And again, you go back all the way with single crochet, chain one and single crochet again. This is just a little video, a little update on how it should look at the end of the row. And you should have, have 42 stitches in total, if you count both sides and the tip. Now. I'm at single crochet all the way back. I'm at the tip again. And these are our stitches of the last row, our double stitches of the last row. And again, we will again double all of them. Afterwards, after you doubled all of them, you just go on with single crochet.
Now at the end of this row, you should have 46 stitches in total, which means on both sides as, as well as on the tip, 46 in total. Then we chain one and in order to straighten this upper edge here, we make some single crochet here through this top loop. Then we poke through the loops left and right from our slip knot. Right and left. Then in this top loop here again, then in this little lower loop here, and top loop again. And our side part is finished. This is how it should look like. Now, to fix it to the main part, I normally use slip stitches, but you can also just sew it on. Therefore, I make, for the slip stitches, I make one chain stitch here first and if you do that um, make sure that you sew in the thread of the main part first. I didn't do that here but didn't want to interrupt the video so I should definitely have done it first so but you will see the technique anyway. So I poked in through the main part of the back, poked through the side part, then grab the yarn and pull it through all the loops on my hook. Then again, poke in in the main part of the back, poke in in the side part, grab the yarn and pull it through all the loops on your hook. And again, poke in, in the main part, in the side part, grab the yarn and pull it through all the loops on your hook. And you just continue doing that for the whole round. And in this way you get this nice little edge here, as I said, go on like this for the whole side. And then of course you repeat this whole side pattern on the other side. In the end you just have to fix the D-rings with a few stitches, then fix the lock. You can sew plastic canvas to the inside and your back is finished.